Hey, I'm Crystal Nurple. I am an organizing expert and coach. I help people declutter, de-stress, and simplify through one-on-one coaching and through my Loving Your Home Club. Today, I have the honor of speaking with Lisa Zarotny. She is a certified productivity and stress management coach. She is also a very serious pro at leaning into the gratitude. We're going to talk a little bit about how you can create space for what matters by using gratitude as a tool. And stick around to the end so you can see what it's really like to have a conversation with Crystal. Okay, let's get the conversation started. Okay, so today I am with Lisa Zarotny. And I say I said that correctly, didn't I? You yeah. did. Well done. So Lisa and I have known each other, I don't know, a couple years now, maybe, and just um, from a distance, because you're in New York and I'm in Texas, and I stumbled upon you somehow, you popped up on my news feed, I don't know, I think it was just like divine intervention, someone that I needed to know. So Lisa is a, let's see, you are a certified stress management and productivity coach. Mm -hmm. Okay which is a mouthful, but that is like, oh my gosh, stress, stress management and productivity. So go hand in hand and what an amazing skill set you have. Yes. And she also leans very heavily into gratitude. So that's why I'm drawn to her too, just the positivity. So, and, um, I was on her positive, positively living podcast too. So we'll talk a little bit about that also. Um, episode 35, I think. Yes. In January. Yeah, so go right. check yes. Yes. So if you don't mind, then I'm going to let you kind of introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about your story, because your story is very powerful, in my opinion, I think could help a lot of people too. So, so go for it. Okay, yes. And I I wish I could remember how long we've known each other. But you're absolutely right. There was something, something divine about that. And I really feel like my entire path to what I've been doing as a coach has had this sort of flow to it that's just meant to be. And it, when I say it all started, I mean, you know, we always have these tendencies. Uh, I think that we realize later when we look back, we're like, oh yeah, now that makes sense. And I've always had an organized mind and organizing tendencies. And during a really, really difficult time in my life, I was a caregiver for my mom. She had Alzheimer's and I was pregnant with my son and then pregnant with my daughter during this entire time. Mm -hmm. For nearly five years, I cared for her while I had both of them. So it was pregnancies and and an infant and a toddler and, and the whole match. And oh my goodness, it's still difficult to talk about. Every time I bring it up, I'm like, how much do I say? You know, because I am a positive person, but I also think that for other caregivers, it would do them a disservice if I wasn't really honest about how difficult it was. And it created so much chaos and clutter and and so and that's the inside and outside kind of clutter that we've talked about you know it's mm-hmm. it was overwhelm plain and simple and i was in survival mode and when that time came to an end when she no longer needed my care i needed to step out of whatever that was, that kind of, you know, chaotic, frenetic energy, and really think about what's next. And I almost just took a step forward and was like, okay, what do I need to do next? Do I need to get a job? What's and something in me, a voice inside me said, wait, let's clear a path. Let's clear out and figure out what's going on. And that led me to the clearing out physically and emotionally. It led me to the professional organizing, which is where you and I overlap and bond. And we understand how the inner and outer affect each other. I didn't really know that at the time. I was going instinctively. I was studying, training, joined um, our National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. And I knew it was powerful and I wanted to help others do the same thing, to release what doesn't serve, to make the space for what matters, to clear that path. And as I did that, I just realized it was like, okay, here and here is where we need to concentrate. Our hearts and our heads are what carry everything. And what do we do with that? You and I have talked about gratitude before, and it's a very, very important topic to me. As a matter of fact, it became like a a special passion for me. 
And at first it felt sort of like off it, or, or different. It was like, you're into productivity and organizing, but you're talking about gratitude. Wait, what? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm jumping here just because I know you don't want to, it's almost like you don't want to confuse your audience or your clients, but it's everything though. It's all encompassing. Gratitude is in every part of life. And I have yeah. naturally gone there. I talk about it all the time in loving yeah. your home club and yes. with my clients. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, and that's another place where we, we, we overlap and we bond and what I appreciate so much about you. And, and when you were on my podcast, that's what we were talking about is it's not just organize your home, it's create a place and a space that you love and that brings out the best in you. Right. And so, and that's what I'm looking to help people do. And I guess I focused more on the, uh, the inside, if you will, or that's kind of the direction that I have gone. And that also includes our expectations for what we're doing on our to-do list and our scheduling and, and, you know, all of those expectations, but somewhere in there, I knew gratitude was healing. And the story behind that is an interesting one. I actually have a podcast episode, uh, well, about my clutter story that kind of goes into this a little bit. I also have one about gratitude that goes into this deeper, but I want to give you kind of the overarching story, which is that I was not immediately drawn to it because I misunderstood like what it meant. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought that it meant, well, you need to be grateful, almost like you need to suck it up and be grateful and thankful for what you do have. And I was hurting. And that was not a good message for me. So if anything, that's what I want to bring to the world is a better understanding of what gratitude truly is. And that gratitude does not deny the hurt that you go through. It does not deny your struggles. And it is there for you in your time of need because it is that healing. Oh, I love that. That is such a beautiful way to put that. Exactly. I think a lot of people do think that just suck it up, buttercup, be thankful for what you have. People have a lot less than you. That yeah. is not what it is at all. So how do you explain then? Like, I think that gratitude somehow cleans, it, it is decluttering. It cleans yeah. up something on the inside. Like, I mean, how you, you're very eloquent with your words. So like, how <laughs> would you explain like how gratitude opens up space for you? So understanding that, that gratitude is, you know, a, a deep appreciation for something and that it is not connected to emotions. You don't have to be happy. It's not happy people who are grateful. It's grateful people who are happy. Understanding, you know, there's science behind it. There's positive psychology research, like Harvard level research that is backing us up on all of this. So when you understand what it is, that it is a deep appreciation. It is awareness and seeking out the good in your life and honing in on it because there's this concept, what you focus on, you fuel and you grow, right? And yeah. when you find those things, so again, it's not that we're denying what isn't working. It's not that you shouldn't rant and, and, and acknowledge anything that's, that's going wrong. We need that. That's part of all of the emotions that we have. It's part of our, our mental health and our well-being. But with gratitude, you are intentionally seeking and searching for the good, focusing on it and appreciating it. I think when we do that, we do a couple of things. One it allows us to release the negative because we're so focused on the positive. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing because uh, there's a saying, I don't even know where it came from, but it's like, if you're going through hell, don't stop and build a house, right? It's like, don't stay there. So if something goes wrong, wallow, do what you need to do, but then search out you know, what's good. And again, it's not when we come from gratitude that things are always going wrong, but I use that as an example because I think that's where it's most misunderstood. So now we look and we say, okay, what can I find that's good? Well, when you find it, you can't help but train your brain to keep finding the good and keep finding more and more and more, right? Absolutely, yes. Well, and I love how you said too, like, focus on where you want to go, focus on the positive, focus, focus. And Emily Fletcher is, I'm a very big fan of Emily Fletcher. She taught me how to meditate. <laughs> She's got a book. And um, 
And that's what she said something brilliant too, is like focus on where you want to be going instead of running away from what you're trying to avoid. Oh, yeah. Don't even think about that. Don't run away, like go towards gratitude, go towards what you want to create. That's right. So I think that's a lot of, that's a lot of what you, you teach also, which I That's love. exactly right. Thank you. Uh, that it's that focusing on, uh, well, what can you do? It's, it's a, you know, the can do spirit sounds kind of funny, but, but it, but it's real because if you're, if you think, well, what is possible? What can I do? And guess what? That is a beautiful way to work on habits because we both know with habit development that we are not going to eradicate bad habits. You are much better off trying to crowd out when I say bad and good, I mean, what serves us, what doesn't serve us, right? Where we're trying to go. So crowd out the ones that are not working for you with the good ones. Yeah. And and that's another way. It's almost like uh, when you talk about decluttering or or clearing out, it's like when you are are filling up whatever space you have. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's, I guess, more of the cerebral or heart space or or what have you. When you fill it up with the things that serve and nourish and light you up and are are beautiful, uh, you don't end up having space for the stuff that's going to weigh you down, right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. To me, that's well, gratitude. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. I mean, you just have, I don't know. I just, you have so much knowledge in this area. And just like I said, I think you're very eloquent, eloquent in the way that you explain it to people. So um, thank you. I think we could be done probably. And somebody probably would be like, I got it. I think that's <laughs> perfect. But um, so I guess um, tell everybody though, like, what it is that you do for a living aside from gratitude. Oh, and by the way, you do have the Facebook group. If you want to like shift people over there, please join that. It's very just, you know, uplifting and positive. So it's Mm. the positively grateful series. Is that correct? That's right. The positively grateful series community is a free Facebook group. I think we're coming up on four years this November and yeah, I know. And so now I understand that it's a power habit. Now I understand that's what I'm teaching is the practice and the habit of gratitude. And it's one that will serve you so powerfully. And Mm -hmm. that is a free group. And we go through, we're, we're there year round and I will post periodic things, but every quarter in the middle of the quarter, including November, which is a big gratitude month, I will go in and I will do some videos and coach and we'll have daily prompts. And it's just, you're right. It's a very low key, easy to kind of be part of group that promotes and reminds you of gratitude. And not only that, but when we have practices like any other habit, sometimes we get out of it and and we're like, Ooh, I got to get back to that. And so this is a wonderful, gentle way to get up to speed. Yes. (laughs) Yes, it is. Yes. I love it. Just, just the little prompts that you put out there. Oh, I I didn't do gratitude today. So just reminds you to do gratitude. Exactly. It brings it top of mind. So, and in terms of what I do in general, I've been trying to think of the, the simplest way to put it because it, there's so much going on. I do come from a very holistic approach and because, and this is the same thing that you say, and again, why we bond is that it's all connected. Mm -hmm. And the sooner that we understand that it's all connected, the better off we are. But sometimes the all can be overwhelming. So I definitely reduce that overwhelm, but really the key is I help people find their values and their filters. And then I help as like a matchmaker, like a productivity matchmaker, we figure out the right ways, the right habits, the right productivity techniques. And you can do much of this on your own, but sometimes it can be confusing. It can be frustrating. It can be not as fast as you'd like it to be. So I help speed up the process and make it fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you can do anything on your own. It's really overwhelming. And to have an expert guide you through the process. Oh my gosh. It's, um, yes can be life-changing for sure. So you help people then um, who are struggling like to maybe create balance. I don't even know if that exists. Um, yep. And yep, that- finding a rhythm and routines. And uh, I'm sure you help people eliminate a lot of stuff. 
Yeah. 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 Because the first step is always decluttering. And so I, you know, and sometimes we, we can think of decluttering in our traditional sense, right in our space. And that makes sense, but translating it to your digital space, to your calendar, to your to-do list and your tasks, thinking in terms of that, even the information that you receive, Mm -hmm. all of that can be clutter if it's not serving you. And I help create the filters for that and understand too, because for some people, they want that information and it doesn't overload them. Other people have a different threshold. So again, you really have to start with knowing you and, and that's how, that's how I help. Right. And even knowing what to declutter, a lot of people don't even consider some of the things I'm sure that you mentioned that like that probably should go away. And you're like, Oh, you didn't even think about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you don't so, think uh, about what impact there is. Right. Yes. Yeah. So how does someone work with you then? Like, how do they get a hold of you if they need to schedule? So you do it through Zoom, I'm assuming too. Yes, definitely. And that was something that I was doing even before we were dealing with a worldwide pandemic. But what's also nice, as you know, is that we don't have the the logistics issue anymore. We can all benefit from each other and and stay a community just like you and I do. So yeah, it's very easy. You can go to my website, positivelyproductive.com, or you can find me on social media and, and, you know, send a DM. I'm positively underscore Lisa on Instagram. Have a lot of fun over there and uh, positively productive on Facebook, if that's a place where you like to play, but uh, it's quite simple. I work one-on-one. I have moved into uh, a membership group as well, but mostly it's the one-on-one coaching. And I even have like a productivity boost session that's 30 minutes, easy to book one time, try it and like lift a challenge that has been like something that's keeping you stuck that you're like, I just don't know how to, how to handle this. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways. That oh, I that's good. Yeah. Just something to light, light a fire under your booty. Exactly. Just like 30 minutes. Nice- just like, yes. 30 minutes with Lisa. I love talking to Lisa. So I'm sure that, yes, I highly recommend her for sure. So thank you. I appreciate awesome. that. Um, okay. Well, let's wrap it up then. Yes. I thank you so much for spending some time with me, but I do want to ask you two questions. So um, yes. share with us um, one thing that you love about your home. One thing that I love about my home is the light that comes in and the energy that I feel in it. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. And then what's one thing you love about yourself? One thing I love about myself is my kindness. I love that about you too. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Lisa. Okay. I'm going to put your information and the link down below somewhere, wherever I post this, I'll put, I'll put your contact information. So if you would like to work with Lisa to be a little bit more productive, do so. And then head over to her Facebook group um, to lean into the gratitude. I mean, you're going to be amazed by what happens when you lean into the gratitude, all the amazing things that's going to, you know, pop up in your life. I love it. Agreed. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. just be you. You offer so much, but gratitude. (laughs) So we're going to focus on gratitude because Mm -hmm. that's what I think of when I think of Lisa. Thank you. I love that. That's a pop filter. I could use one of those. Oh Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm like a popper baby. (laughs) I don't know what it is. I'm a, I'm a walking blooper. I'm always tripping over my words or have something weird. I just recorded. You are not. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, you don't believe it. You know why? Because I make it so okay that you're like, I didn't even notice that. I'm like, because I made it okay. I was right recording. Now, so my brain is like, Wah! Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end. You can find Lisa at PositivelyProductive.com and you can check out her simple system if you are interested in getting organized and decluttering. You can also get extra help from me by joining the club, LovingYourHomeClub.com.